Oh, thank you so much. Good morning. Thank you. It is such a pleasure to be here in Chicago, participating as a private citizen, as a co-host of CGI, and as a representative of what we are officially renaming uh, the Bill, Hillary, and Chelsea Clinton Foundation. I am thrilled to um, fully join this remarkable organization that Bill started a dozen years ago, uh, and to call it uh, my home for the work I will be doing, some of which I will outline today, and also will have an exciting announcement uh, tomorrow as well. Um, I listened uh, to my friend, uh, Mayor Emanuel, uh, reference the Blackhawk games. I can remember listening to the Blackhawk games on the radio uh, when I did my homework all those years ago. And my father and brothers and I were great Blackhawk fans, uh, but three overtimes, really? <laughs> I can imagine there is a, a sense of euphoria as well as exhaustion affecting many of our, our Chicago uh, uh, participants today. And uh, I heartily endorse the mayor's uh, call to go Blackhawks. I want to take also a moment of personal privilege first to acknowledge the really imaginative, visionary work that Bill has done uh, with the foundation and all of its constituent parts. Uh, I, I personally believe he's given philanthropy uh, and problem solving a a new uh, paradigm. And we've seen already this morning, starting with the reports of the commitments, following uh, with the mayors, uh, what that means, to really look at solving problems through partnership and collaboration. Uh, and I am very uh, proud of what he has accomplished. I'm also a very proud mother because uh, Chelsea's role is expanding, uh, and this is truly a a labor of love for our entire family. In just a few short years, uh, she has helped the foundation widen our reach to a whole new generation of young people through CGI Youth, CGI University, most recently this year, held down at uh, Washington University in St. Louis. We're bringing together more than 1,000 innovative students from around the world to work on tough challenges. Many of them are inventing products, uh, creating new approaches to problem solving, and Chelsea's really been our leader there. She also has begun the Foundation's Day of Action program to organize community service campaigns across the country, as well as working on the range of our health initiatives from childhood obesity uh, to other uh, health disparities. And I was thrilled when, as Bill said, she was uh, in Myanmar, Burma, delivering the six billionth, that's billionth with a B, leader of clean water as part of a CGI commitment by Procter & Gamble. So uh, we are so excited and thrilled to have this be a full partnership among the three of us. Uh, <clears throat> This is my first time at CGI America. I was fortunate to attend uh, the annual CGI meeting uh, in New York, uh, speaking on behalf of the administration uh, in the past years. I want to thank the terrific staff and all the sponsors, um, and particularly uh, a prime sponsor and a longtime friend, uh, J.B. Pritzker, whose exciting commitment you just heard. Uh, people have really made this uh, conference a destination. And it's not surprising that it would be held in Chicago since the conference itself began uh, as a, an effort uh, to put our heads together about renewal in America. And Chicago has long taken 
uh, its inspiration and symbol as the rising phoenix. Uh, and I think that's absolutely appropriate as someone who was born in this uh, city and have uh, spent so many wonderful years uh, growing up here and coming back and visiting. It's exciting to see uh, what it looks like, what it's doing, and I appreciated uh, Mayor Emanuel telling us about all the other uh, tasks that are being undertaken to ensure that Chicago uh, is a, a global destination and, and in fact, a, a competitive city um, across the world. Now, over the years, um, there have been more than 2,600 concrete commitments uh, to action uh, at CGI. And I traveled the world quite extensively the last four years, and one of the lessons I took away is that this model of partnerships and commitments is at the heart of what we need to do to meet the challenges of the 21st century. The world is increasingly interdependent and interconnected, all the problems that we face from climate change to financial contagion to nuclear proliferation are too complex and cross-cutting for any one government or indeed for governments to solve alone. So what I called smart power in my time at the State Department uh, included reaching out to tap the energy and the experience and expertise of the civil society academia, of course, the private sector, of course, anyone who was working to solve problems and wanted to collaborate with others who felt the same way. I even named a special representative for global partnerships because I wanted to encourage our diplomats and development experts to view public-private partnerships as one of their most important problem-solving tools. So today, I think it's even more important that we do that here at home and around the world uh, in order to unleash the talents of the American people and catalyze the investments that we need. Uh, we understand that you can't look to government to solve all our problems. You can't trust the market will solve all our problems. We need those partnerships that bring public servants and private leaders together. That's what you'll see here at CGI America. So we have a lot of work ahead of us, and I'm excited to be uh, putting uh, my efforts into it. Uh, and I wanted to just briefly describe to you uh, what I uh, am going to do uh, in my uh, new role at the foundation. Certainly, I will be focused on applying lessons learned from around the world and building new partnerships. Uh, across our entire portfolio, but particularly in three broad areas, areas that have been uh, close to my heart uh, my entire adult life. Early childhood development, opportunities for women and girls, and economic development that creates jobs and gives more people in more places the chance to live up to their own God-given potential. I'll start with early childhood development, and I want to begin by thanking J.B. and M.K. Pritzker and the Pritzker Family Foundation for leading the way on this critical issue. Now, it may surprise some that early childhood development was adopted as an issue at the very first CGI America gathering, because people don't necessarily equate babies and toddlers and preschoolers with competitiveness. And obviously, healthy kids and loving families need no economic justification. That's what everyone should want and work for. But ask yourself, if we don't apply what we know to helping prepare our kids to the best of their abilities to take their role in our country and the world are we really going to be able to maintain the American dream? Are we really going to be able to provide that upward mobility that has been the hallmark of America's journey? But don't take my word for it. Ask yourself this. 
Why is it that China is committed to providing 70 percent of its children with three years of preschool by 2020? Why did the United Kingdom decide in the late 1990s to invest in universal free preschool, create community-based children's centers, and encourage businesses to provide workplace flexibility for parents? Here in the United States, only half of our children receive early childhood education. Some of it, very honestly, is not of high quality. Very few parents, whether they are in a two-parent family or in a single-parent family, have the kind of flexibility that enables them to do the most important job in their life, parent, while doing their job, bringing home the income that keeps their family going. So the fact is, and J.B. Pritzker and I talked about this at length last night, there are huge economic implications in how our kids are prepared. The new brain research that Bill was referring to tells us that what happens in the first five years of life has a dramatic effect on later development. 700 new neural connections are formed every second, laying the foundation for learning, behavior, health, and all the other things we need to grow up as productive adults. Right here in Chicago, the Nobel Prize winning economist James Heckman at the University of Chicago has pioneered research into the broad benefits to our society and our economy from early childhood development. He has proven time and time again, and he will tell any group that is willing to listen, every dollar we invest can yield savings of more than $7 down the road by improving school achievement and graduation rates while reducing problems like teen pregnancy and crime. Now, some of the answer does lie with government, like President Obama's proposal to expand access to high-quality preschool. But there is also a responsibility that has to be met by parents and families, by businesses and communities who are at the center of this challenge. So I particularly want to applaud the commitment progress that J.B. announced this morning and the ways he's going to be modeling, along with Goldman Sachs, Utah, and other partners, uh, new ways to finance early education for some of our most vulnerable children. These so-called social impact bonds uh, can be, I believe, an important innovation for the early learning community and the broader impact investing uh, community. I also want to recognize the commitment by the David and Laura Mirage Foundation and its partners to create networks of childcare and early learning providers that will pool resources, share best practices, and create economies of scale to lower costs and improve quality. Now, from my early days at the Children's Defense Fund, working on behalf of special needs children who were being denied access to education, to bringing a program called HIPPI, the Home Instruction Program for Preschool Youngsters from Israel to Arkansas to give parents support and guidance, to hosting the first ever White House Conference on Early Development and Learning, to working and expanding Early Head Start. This has been a core cause of my life, and it will now be a growing priority of the Clinton Foundation, uh, building on the work that uh, we're already doing uh, and <clears throat> committed to rigorous measurements and evaluation. Uh, now, here in Chicago, we'll be engaging with the CGI Early Childhood Working Group and with leaders and advocates who are here, including uh, Sarah Martinez Tucker, whom you will hear from shortly. And tomorrow, the Clinton Foundation will launch a major new partnership on early childhood development in collaboration with the scientific health and advocacy communities. I can't give you the details today, but our goal is to help parents, teachers, businesses, and communities learn from and apply the latest brain research to take meaningful 
and manageable steps to improve the lives of their kids in the first five years. Now, some of it sounds so simple, you ask, why would we be even talking about it, like encouraging parents to spend time reading and even talking with their children, especially their infants, their babies. But we know it stimulates cognitive development. How do we make sure that parents know that it's an absolutely free way of helping to prepare their children for school? Or how do we make sure that pregnant women, particularly poor women, understand the nutrients they should take to support their own and their baby's health? How do we inspire more businesses to ease the work-related burdens for parents of young children? So I look forward to talking and working with many of you. Of course, those of you already in the early childhood development community, but also expanding this conversation to the private sector, uh, to government officials, to everyone who connects this direct line between what happens in those early months and years to whether or not we're going to maintain our standard of living as a nation. Now, secondly, it will not surprise you that um, I want to work to create more opportunities for women and girls. Uh, I made this a focus of American foreign policy uh, because it's not only the right thing to do, I think it is the great unfinished business of this century, and it is also something that will enhance our competitiveness and the stability of the world at large. Now, research shows that when women participate... When women participate in the economy, everyone benefits. This also should be a no-brainer. When women participate in peacemaking and peacekeeping, we are all safer and more secure. And when women participate in politics, the effects ripple out across society. So, American women went from holding just 37% of all jobs 40 years ago to nearly 48% today. The productivity gains attributable to this increase account for more than $3.5 trillion in GDP growth over the last four decades. Yet, when The Economist magazine recently published a glass ceiling index ranking countries based on factors like opportunities for women in the workplace and equal pay, the United States was not even in the top 10. Why? Well, some of the factors they looked at, women still hold less than 17% of seats on corporate boards in the United States, far behind other developed economies. In Norway, for example, it's more than 40%. Research by the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund show that eliminating barriers to women's participation in the economy boosts productivity and GDP for entire economies. I think that's growth we can't afford to ignore. Other countries are taking note. Uh, Just this month, the Prime Minister Abe of Japan said he wanted to put women at the heart of his economic agenda to expand access to affordable child care and parental leave and for businesses to appoint at least one woman executive. He said women are Japan's most underused resource, and he's right. In fact, women are the world's most underused resource. So I will continue championing the rights and opportunities of women around the world, but I don't want to forget women and girls here at home making equal pay a reality, expanding family and medical leave benefits, encouraging more women and girls to pursue careers in STEM, science and technology, engineering, mathematics. And we heard a great presentation from the manufacturing uh, community today to say include productivity uh, for women in production. Now, we need more efforts like the CGI commitment by Capital One to create a training program for women veterans who want to start and grow small business. That's a wonderful idea. So 
Let me thank all of our CGI America partners, all of our CGI partners, and I look forward to working with you on behalf of women and girls here at home and around the world. And that brings me to the third area of my passion, which is very related. Economic development that creates good jobs and opportunities, especially for young people, who face an unemployment rate double the national average, and for all those left behind by our fast-changing economy. Now, there are important debates to be had about how government policies can best stimulate growth and increase economic and social mobility. But this can't just be a conversation about Washington. We all need to do our part. That's why the U.S. Conference of Mayors' work on infrastructure is so important and such a good example. Because we have to prove, again, to ourselves, as well as the rest of the world, that our public and private sectors can work together uh, to find common ground for the common good. So smart investments in infrastructure are important. And over the next uh, two days, we'll be highlighting dozens of uh, commitments and partnerships to improve our country's uh, competitiveness, from boosting energy efficiency to expanding workforce training to supporting small businesses. We'll hear from practitioners, like a school superintendent from the Rio Grande Valley in Texas who started a door-to-door -door counseling for young people in his district who have dropped out, and a new vocational training program to prepare students for good jobs, or the mayor of Rockford, Illinois, who, working with local businesses, is launching manufacturing co-ops to offer opportunities for residents of public housing, ex-offenders coming out of the prison system, and others who often find every door closed. Or the head of the American Federation of Teachers, who has brought together 100 partners from government, business, labor, foundations, to revitalize a remote county in West Virginia, where more than one-third of the residents live in poverty, two-thirds of the homes are substandard, and only half the residents have a high school degree. This is not limited to one county in West Virginia. In too many places in our own country, community institutions are crumbling, Social and public health indicators are cratering, and jobs are coming apart, and communities face the consequences. You probably have seen that the life expectancy, longevity for American women has dropped among women without high school educations. And Digging into the data, researchers have concluded there were two main reasons. One, smoking, and two, the lack of a job. The lack of the connectivity, the lack of meaning, the lack of purpose. So for both young men and young women, because I worry deeply about all the disconnected young men in our society, uh, we have to tackle these problems. So whether it's in McDowell County, West Virginia, or anywhere else, the problems didn't start with the latest recession. There's no single program or investment that will turn things around immediately. Schools, jobs, infrastructure, public health are all connected. This partnership is designed to tackle it and teach us some lessons. That's really what CGI America is designed to do as well, to bring together the best ideas wherever they come from, to find the most innovative solutions, most committed partners, to take on our biggest challenges in an integrated, collaborative way. So after visiting 112 nations over four years, I'm still jet lagged, um, and <coughs> talking with people from every walk of life, I take away three basic lessons. One, I looked at all the international polling data to try to figure out what people in the world, particularly in developing countries, really wanted, because the headlines are often filled with all kinds of stories, and it's unclear what it all adds up to. All the research made the same point. What people wanted was a good job. It didn't matter where they lived. It didn't matter their race or their religion. They wanted a good job. Governments and business have not been able to do that in many places in the world today. 
Secondly, our country's greatest advantage lies in the values that remain at the heart of the American experiment, freedom, equality, and opportunity. As my husband is fond of saying, the idea that if you work hard and play by the rules, you will prosper. You will be able to make a better life for yourself and your family. We cannot afford ever to lose that core belief. Now, I learned that lesson not far from here, growing up in Park Ridge. Uh, one of my earliest memories as a little girl is helping my father in his small fabric printing business here in Chicago, lifting the silk screen, holding the paint squeegee. A lot has changed since then. Technology and globalization are remaking our economy and our society, but our values still inspire the world and they still can guide our way forward. And finally, thirdly, what this meeting is about, and what I think we have to be about, uh, is working together, uh, overcoming the lines that divide us, whether it's partisan, cultural, geographic, building on what we know works, we can take on any challenge we confront. So I'm excited to be here, to be one of your new partners. I thank you for participating in CGI America, for your ideas, your perspectives, and most of all, for your commitments. You really are part of the solution. Thank you all.